there's a, a wonderful guy called Peter Kaufman who, um, and like all credit to him, but somebody asked him this question once. I think he just like reeled it off. Um, uh, he's on the board of the Daily Journal with, with Charlie Munger and he wrote a book about him and they're great fans. And someone was like, what do you look for in a manager? And he sort of gave this, um, this answer that he called the five aces. Um, and I don't, I haven't seen, like we hew very closely to that because I think it just perfectly encapsulates what you should look for generally in a manager across any strategy, any asset class, but really applies for fund managers. And like the first one is total integrity, um, like total unimpeachable integrity. And if you're going to invest in someone's fund, and this is an exercise that all of our LPs, I think need to do on us, for example, like is the manager at the end of the day, pretty much going to put hit, like your interests above his, like that's the kind of benchmark I think you need to have conceptually. And it's vanishingly rare to find. Uh, in, in, in conversations I've had and, and things that I've observed and other funds of funds and, and LPs that are, professional LPs I've spoken to. Um, so total integrity is really like the most important thing, but bringing it back to SMAs, it's not that we don't look for that, but the cost of us being wrong on the level of integrity that a manager displays or will display, like the cost is truncated, like, they're not going to run away with the money. They're not going to defraud us. If we get uncomfortable with them, we can just reduce their capital from one day to the next. Um, and we can monitor everything that they're doing. And so integrity is important, but the cost of being wrong, I think, in, and you can structure things in such a way that the cost of being wrong is much lower. Um, and conversely to that, you can take a bet on a manager much more easily. So you can have a a good feel for someone and not need a 20 year track record to back you up before actually allocating to them because you can do it with tiny amounts of money and then you can monitor you know, in, in real detail what it is that they're doing and establish quantitatively whether there is or is not an edge um, the second thing he looks for is like world-class fluency and this is something that we absolutely are looking for as well like whatever strategy it is that you're running are you the best in the world at doing it and like what's always important to me, and this is why I really do mean like, please reach out if you're trading in the crypto space. Like my goal is basically to talk to everyone. Uh, and I'm six, 700 manager meetings in. So that's most, but certainly not all of the managers in the space. Um, and so we're always looking to talk to new people and you start to be able to kind of triangulate between what somebody's saying and the depth with which somebody has thought about a particular trade or a particular risk. Um, and so it's, it's, Kind of an interesting exercise to take a week out and just have back-to-back -back manager meetings and just triangulate kind of where everyone is how they're all thinking um, at a particular kind of point in time um a fair fee structure i think is uh peter's kind of third point which again for us doesn't i, I think it's it's incredibly important and it should be aligned but for us we're you know we, we sort of come in with with our terms so a manager will show us their gross returns and we'll tell them what that's worth to us and sort of offer them a, a fee structure and, and an incentive mechanism. And if they're happy with it, that's wonderful. And I think usually they are because we're very happy to pay for, for top quality. Um, but if they're not, then we have a strong idea of how we want to compensate our managers. Um, and then, you know, uncrowded investment space, this is important. Like I keep seeing managers, you know, you set up a fund or a, really with fund, I think is, is the <clears throat> funds are the most kind of susceptible to this. You set up a fund and you do a strategy basis trading, perfect example. And then the returns go down. And so you add more leverage because this is like, this is what you do. And you have investors demanding a certain return and you're probably charging, you know, a hefty performance fee, like a, a big chunk of your P and L is coming from the performance, um, in, in crypto funds. And suddenly you've got bills to pay and you can't pay them. And so you have this incentive to get stupid. Uh, like people will start doing stupid things under duress. Um, and so being in this kind of uncrowded investment space where they don't need to do stupid things to generate good returns is I think incredibly important in crypto. Um, and then I think as last one's kind of a long runway, which again, like if you're an LP, you want to just give someone money for 10 years and not have to worry about it because we're kind of trading these markets every day and we're doing this full time. We're very happy to, you know, we have allocated to strategies where 
we don't know if that is still going to be making money in six months time we're still happy to do it hopefully we'll be proven wrong and it will but if those returns go away we can reallocate the capital you know it took us an hour to spin the accounts up um we learned a lot talking to the manager and if it doesn't work out they're either going to pivot or we're going to reallocate the capital as well Thank you.